Hey everyone and welcome back to UE5 BP Guru. Today we're going to be continuing on with our attack system. Uh, last episode we looked at the stat attacks, but this episode we'll be looking at the physical moves. This looks a lot more crazier than uh, it should, <laughs> but um, I promise it does. Uh, it will make sense at the end. So, uh, there's a basic formula on uh, Pokemon for attacking and how that damage is calculated. So, I'll go through it as best I can. Um, and the basic formula is, um, it's two times level, times crit, uh, divide that by five, t plus two, times by power, times by attack, divided by defense, divided by 50 plus 20, times stab, times type one, times, times two, times random. Mine's slightly different but it does follow the, a similar pattern. So the first thing we're doing is we're breaking our move strut. We're then breaking our party information to get our party uh, basic info. We're also breaking it to get our final stats, to get our attack. We're also breaking it to get our Ringmon build. So we're breaking our Ringmon build, we're getting our Ringmon, Ringmon basic information and we're getting our Ringmon's uh, final stat. So, first of all, we times uh, two via our level. So our starting level is level five. We times up by two, that's 10. Uh, then I don't have a crit set up. Uh, I'm not even sure I want to set up a crit uh, at this point because I'm quite happy with how the attacks go and things like that. Um, if I'm gonna do that, we'd have to do a crit roll um, after we've done an accuracy check. So it would be something that would be very easy to um, to input because we just have a crit stat that would come in so at the moment it's times by one because if there's no crit that it, it would be like that anyway so we're times that by one we then divide it by five oh, also the reason why I've put it in there to divide by one is because if I want to add the crit in it's easy that I can just plug it in and it won't affect anything I don't have to add any extra nodes or mess around with anything it does no harm being there you know uh, so then we divide it by five so Again, 10 divided by 5 is 2. We then add 2, so that's 4. Uh, we then times it by the power of our move. Now, that could be anything. It could be like 95, 85, whatever it is. Um, but let's say it's uh, 80 for, for now. Yeah. Um, so that's going to be like 320, something like that. We then divide uh, our attack by our enemy's defense, and then that gives that figure, that times is that by our power. We then divide that whole calculation by 50. And then we just add two. <laughs> uh, then we have a stab figure, which is worked out down here. And stab is just, is our ringmon's type the same as the move type that it's using. If it is, it gets an, a 0.5, a 1.5 times bonus. But if it's not, it doesn't do anything and it's just times by one. So if our grass uh, creature is using a grass move, it's gonna get an extra 1.5 boost to its power. Now bear in mind this is only for physical attacks, not for, um, it's not gonna affect stat moves like uh, absorb and things like that. Absorb always will just take 10% or root sap as I call it. Once that's happened, uh, we then want to find a few other bits of information out. This is where our typing uh, multiplication table comes into play. Um, it's gonna look at um, our first typing and it's going to say, okay, let's work out what he's uh, find, fighting. And it'll do that based on uh, our enemy's type 1. So whatever our enemy's typing in, it'll find uh, our typing via our move type row name. And it'll say, okay, the move it's using, does it, um, does it match to the enemy's typing? Or is it, uh, sorry, what is, 
it'll find the matching on the row table. So if it's uh, a grass move, it'll see if it's fire, water, grass. If it's water, it'll come back with a two times um, effectiveness. It'll times by two. But if it's like fire and we're using a grass move, it's going to do it by one. Uh, 0 0.1. Uh, 0 0.5, sorry. 0 .5. It halves whatever the multiplication is. And it does the same thing for typing 2. But the, the way I've done this is I've, I've just gone to see if type 2 is equal to none. If it is equal to none, if that's if that's true, it'll just do nothing. It'll just do a times 1 multiply on here. But if it's not, it'll set that as um, whatever that field is. Okay. So if it's water and ground, if it's like a ground water creature, it'll get a two times uh, multiplier from grass against water, and then it'll also get a two times multiplier against the earth power. So it's gonna really do some big damage. Um, so yeah, and that's how that works out. Uh, and then all we do is we round the figure, so we get a full figure. And then we get HP uh, of the enemy, and we just take that off, and then we set it. And again, we're setting every node, boom, 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 so that everything gets sent, pushed back through into our current Ringmon uh, field. The same thing is happening uh, down here, exactly the same thing. The only difference is, is we're taking our special defense and special effect uh, uh, attack figures um, for the uh, special attack so again remember we're checking to see if it's a physical move which we set on our move if we go back to the move strut uh, we have a physical option so we can tick to say it's physical and if it is <clears throat> it'll go down this way and just use the normal attack and defense but if it's a special attack like let's say like flamethrower uh, it's going to come down this path uh, and do a non-physical attack and it'll take those special attacks and defense attack figures but everything else is exactly the same. The only thing that's changing is the variables we're using from what we're inputting into um, to get that base figure. Uh, and then once we've done that, we cast our third person character. We, we are setting our current ring mod and we're pushing that through again into the next uh, section. We're also updating things like enemy health, uh, setting the percentages via the health and max health. Uh, we're just updating everything as we go. Again, it looks very messy, but if you follow the process along, it does make sense as to why it looks so crazy. Um, and even if I put this into a function, it's just going to be condensed into a function that, that's doing exactly the same thing. You go in the function, it's still going to be doing all this all over the place. Um, so yeah, so yeah, that's that's kind of how it is. Um, and but everything's working. I can show you where we're at now. So if I click play, it should have my previous save information. If it doesn't, I'll um, I'll start again, but we'll see. Oh, it has. Let's just see. I've got a ring mon. I do. Yeah, level fourteen Herbadger. Lovely. He's level fourteen. I, that's how long I've been testing this and, <laughs> and and killing other creatures. So I'll still level five if we attack. It. Let's say I use scratch. It does. Oh. Oh, it did it twice. Why did it do it twice? Didn't that time? Interesting. I don't know. Why I did that. Maybe I've created Fury Slots without even realizing. <laughs> but yeah, we can go in, we can attack stuff. Uh, if I use Growl, it should come up in the top left corner uh, with um, what? So this, it's. Oh, I see what's happening. It's telling me uh, also what move this guy's picked ready for his attack, even though we're not there yet. Uh, so that's interesting. That's an interesting process. So let's use Growl. It does, brings his uh, attack down to nine. So obviously, if he was attacking me, he would do less damage. Let's use it again. Let's And um, let's do. Uh, I don't know why I've got none, but I think it's because I, I have a thing set up, but it's not right. We do scratch. It does it twice. Why is it doing it twice? Interesting. Not sure why that was happening. Let's see if I. I, I oh, none does damage as well. So there's some things I need to fix, clearly. Um, let's. It might also be, though, because um, if I clear my information. Let's get rid of that, right. Let's click play, we should have a fresh, no, apparently not. Okay, let's click on it. Oh, run, 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 run. All right, let's try this again. C to delete my information. We press play. We have a new fresh file. Let's go to her badger. We'll say yes. Uh, let's check just to make sure he is, he's level five, no XP or anything, that's good. 
let's see if this happens now. It might just be a setup with um, how I've got everything going at the moment. Let's do scratch. Oh, he's gone first. Okay, that's not good. That's fine. I haven't set up the enemy going first yet. That's it, It's going to just basically flip everything we're doing now. Um, let's do scratch. He does it once. He does it twice. I've obviously got something set up there that's not quite right. That's fine. We can use growl. Takes his uh, attack away. Uh, yeah, takes his attack away. Let's, uh, let's try it again to see if it. No, it's not doing it twice. Hmm. Uh. Ah. Okay. I haven't actually fixed this enemy attack. So if I take that off for a second, that's where the double attack's coming from. It's because I basically what I'm doing is I duplicated my code. So that I could, um, oh, he went first, damn it, he's got better speed. Uh, yeah, I basically updated it so that I can just, I duplicate it, sorry, Saban, so that I can um, um, flip the information. Uh, but obviously, because it's still plugged in and there's still information going in there, it's uh, it's it's running it twice, so that's what's happening. It's, it should be the enemy attacking, but it's actually me. Yeah, there you go. The enemy's picked the same move. <laughs> it's trying to use it, so it's using it on itself. There you go, it's fixed. Um, yeah, but that'll give you an idea. So that, that shows the enemy is actually using his attack, but it's not um, <laughs> It's not doing it the way I wanted it to. It's obviously doing it against itself. Um, brilliant, there you go. So it's back, it's fixed, it's working. There you go. Don't do what I did and duplicate your code and leave it in <laughs> when it's not ready. <laughs> So, um, so yes, yeah, so it's all working fine. So hopefully you guys should be at the same point I am now where you've got your enemy attacks working. Um, you should be able to lower there. Oh, he's moving first. I always forget when I'm level five and they're level five, they tend to have high speeds. Damn IV rolls. Um, yeah, there we go. We should be able to do it now. Scratch, there you go. Um, and then we should be able to also lower attack. There you go. Lowers the attack. Um, it might not lower any further. No, it doesn't. So I need to fix that apparently as well. Um, but we'll get there. I think when I first set this up, I couldn't even attack more than once. So I'm pretty happy with it. There we go. Brilliant. Um, so yeah, hopefully you guys are, it's helping you guys out that's following this along. Um, thank you so much guys for watching. In the next episode, I will be tidying a lot of this up and then sort of starting to work on the, um, uh, enemy attacks um, I'm gonna be covering a couple of other tutorials as well so um, just bear with me it might be a little while till the next episode of this one's out but um, thank you so much guys for watching don't forget to like don't forget to comment and don't forget to subscribe if you're not already it's free to do and you can always change your mind thanks so much take care bye